national news. The Minister of Constitution and Legal Affairs, Ambassador Dr. Augustine Mahiga, has died this morning in Dodoma. In his statement, President Magufuli said Ambassador Mahiga fell ill at his home and that he was already dead when he was received at the hospital. President Magufuli has sent condolences to the family of the late Ambassador Mahiga. Speaker of Parliament Job Dugai, members of Parliament, employees of the Ministry of Constitution and Legal Affairs and residents of Iringa region following his death, saying Ambassador Mahiga had been hardworking, ethical, patriotic, and an exemplary diplomat who had represented Tanzania well in the international arena. Members of Parliament have also expressed sorrow following the death of the Minister of Constitution and Legal Affairs, Ambassador Dr. Agustin Mahiga in Dodoma, with some describing the late Ambassador Mahiga as a diplomat who had used wisdom in addressing various challenging issues. Ambassador Agustin Mahiga was born on 28th of August 1945 and has held various posts including as an envoy and director of Tanzania Intelligence and Security Service between 1980 and 1993. In the House of Parliament, just in the space of three weeks, we've lost three members, so we don't know who is next. Things are terrible. If it is possible, then we must get tested to see if we are infected so we can be treated before things get worse. His passing has greatly shocked us, not just I, but my fellow members of parliament. Ambassador Mahiga was amongst ministers who took their jobs seriously. We've lost a leader who was diligent, honest and competent. He has been of help to us in a lot of areas and has done so well in all positions he held. Tanzania has lost one of his uh, gallant son, a patriot, a nationalist, an accomplished diplomat, and above all, a public servant who saved his country with total loyalty. Dr. Augustine Philip Mahiga, who served in various capacities in the government, in the United Nations system, and in the few last years from, from 2015 as a cabinet minister, has indeed served this country with accolades and accomplishments. May his soul rest in peace. Amen. Now, moving on, more than 138 houses have been demolished and 139 people made homeless at Kipwa village in Kasanga, Wad Kalambo district, Trukwa region, after water flooding from Lake Victoria engulfed the area. Kipwa village, which is located along the border between Tanzania and Zambia, has 321 wards started uh, being affected with floods since February this year. People have been suffering from issues of floods for a very long time. Because of this tragedy, we have decided to help each other. In one house right now, you can find up to 20 people. Some are seeking shelter in dispensaries and in forests. We ended up seeking shelter in dispensaries and in schools. We are calling on the government to please help us. The damages are huge. People are badly affected. We have already reached here. Our work will be to do assessments on damage incurred in each house. Last respects for the body of retired Chief Justice Augustine Ramadan uh, were held at the Karamji grounds in Dar es Salaam and attended by various government and religious leaders as well as representatives of different countries. Among leaders present were former president of the third and fourth phase governments, Jakai Kikwete and Benjamin Kappa. Retired Chief Justice Augustine Ramadan will be laid to rest tomorrow at the family burial ground in Kimara, Kingongo, Dar es Salaam.
As the Chief Justice at that time, judicial ruling was final and carried a lot of weight, and through his judgment, his voice will continue to guide us for a very long time. It is clear that the departed had a special talent. He was able to handle various responsibilities that he had to fulfill with efficiency and humility. We remember him as someone who was able to serve the government and the court in carrying out these two roles. He managed to perform competently, but he was one of a very few people who managed to be successful in what he did in the two governments, that is, the Union government and that of Zanzibar. May his soul rest in peace. Amen. Now, the second vice president of Zanzibar, Ambassador Saif Ali Idi, has called on members of the Council of Representatives to put coronavirus education top of the agenda when speaking for voters' support. Now, Ambassador Saif Ali Idi made this statement when receiving a donation of 50 million shillings from members of Chama Chama Pinduzi. People in rural areas still don't know how to protect themselves. I know that in the near future we will be going there a lot because we'll be looking for votes. So we must use this opportunity to educate them. <laughs> We made a decision to contribute towards the fund to help the government in the fight. The government will decide how best to use it, whether to buy masks or help our doctors. Trade Union Congress of Tanzania, Tukta, has called on the government to address various workers' claims when improving their interests as well as taxes charged on their salaries, which have become a big burden to workers. The statement was made in Dar es Salaam by the Secretary of Tukta, Said Wamba, on May Day, which this year is not being celebrated because of the coronavirus pandemic. All of us are fighting against corona, but I believe there are those who are fighting more severely than others, and these are the doctors and nurses and other medical personnel. These are front runners in this fight, and we must therefore protect them with personal protective equipment and find ways to motivate them during this trying period. The District Commissioner of Handeni in Tanga region, Godwin Godwe, has commended youth for being innovative after creating a hand washing technology which can be used in the fight against the spread of coronavirus. He made the comments when receiving the innovation from an organization called Dokas. They are very innovative, aiding us in the fight against corona. They have come up with something like this. Others should also do the same and probably come up with ideas such as the production of soaps. So I encourage all of you to do the same. Now, residents from Bukoba Municipal who have constructed in areas near the shores of Lake Victoria have been directed to move in order to avoid disasters caused by increasing water levels of the lake. In order to evade disaster from happening, as you can see, the volume of water has increased today. We've asked residents to voluntarily leave rather than wait for disaster to strike because then the impact will be severe. The water caused the wall to collapse, allowing water to flood residential areas. And that is the end of national news. International news follows next.
and in international news. Rwanda has partially lifted the national lockdown, allowing businesses to operate from Monday, May 4th. The new measures will be reviewed after 15 days upon a health assessment. Rwanda ordered a lockdown on March 22nd to prevent spread of the coronavirus. As from Monday, the country will allow free movement from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. and residents will need permission for movement beyond 8 p.m. There shall be immense changes as people are going back to work with the challenge of many companies counting loss they have incurred. People should expect salary cuts since the economy is no longer stable. Fifteen Kenyans have tested positive for the new coronavirus, bringing the tally of confirmed cases to 411. Health Cabinet Secretary Mutahi Kagwe said uh, the new cases, which range from 2 to 79 years of age, are from 1,434 samples tested across the country in the past 24 hours. Four people have also succumbed to the coronavirus bringing the total number of fatalities to 21. Tujichunge. Tujichunge wakati huu mgumu. Na najua mimi ya kwamba kuna wengi ambao wanapitia mashida kwa sababu ya huu gonjwa. South Africa has started to gradually loosen its strict coronavirus lockdown, allowing some industries to reopen after five weeks of restrictions that plunged its struggling economy deeper into turmoil. About 1.5 million workers in selected industries uh, returned to work in the next phase under strict health conditions. Winter clothing, textile and packaging manufacturing are among industries permitted to reopen factories and restaurants will also open but only for takeaway deliveries now the ministry of health in uganda has confirmed two new coronavirus cases bringing the tally to 83 the two cases are two lorry drivers from kenya we are calling for business activities to resume life is difficult we can't live without working. What is important is for people to adhere to protective measures and gears against coronavirus all the time at work. The Independent Electoral Commission in Burundi has started to issue voters' cards to citizens after officially launching the exercise on Thursday, which is expected to end on Monday with the general elections in the country, are expected to be held on 20th of May this year. Honestly, the exercise is going well and people have responded well. Right now, people are getting their cards without any problems. This means that these elections will go smoothly. Generally, the exercise is going on well. The only problem we are facing is those who have lost their identification cards. They cannot be given voters' cards. And also we are urging people to come through in big numbers so that we could end the exercise early. Last thing, they should all remember that no one will be allowed to vote if they do not have cards. And that is the end of international news. Sports news follows next. Away first time, good start from, from uh, Bolt. Bolt leading a moment of going away. Gay trying to go with him and he's going to be dragged through the second place. But he's going to win it by two metres. Away first time, good start from, uh, from uh, Bolt. Bolt leading a moment of going away. Gay trying to go with him and he's going to be dragged through the second place. He did lose to Lynn.
Welcome back and in sports news tonight. Younger Sports Club have called off their annual general meeting which was slated for May due to the coronavirus pandemic. Shindom Sola confirmed the cancellation of the meeting while presiding over the launch of the magazine, website and app of the club in Dar es Salaam which he said are alternative sources of income generation. The chairman further disclosed the presence of GSM in the transformation process of the club is a big step towards ensuring Yanga is run in a professional manner. Msola mentioned some of the clauses contained in the club's constitution will be amended so as to suit the modern transformation requirements. Namungo FC defender Jokumu Kabanda has said the mainland Premier League should be cancelled if the coronavirus pandemic is not contained. Suspended for almost a month now and the left back feels there will be no need for resumption at all if the situation is not going to improve. In case the Tanzania Football Federation TFF cancels the league, Kabanda proposes Simba Sports Club, the leaders and Azam FC to be allowed to take part in the continental assignments for the 2020-2021 season. It is a matter of wait and see whether the TFF will follow the Football Kenya Federation, FKF, and cancel the entire league system and declaring respective champions. Football stakeholders in Tanzania have supported FIFA's proposal to increase the number of substitutions when leagues resume after the coronavirus pandemic. It's to be greenlit by the Football Association Board, IFAB, football's rulemaking body before it is implemented. Former Kagera Sugar, Toto Africans and Azam FC striker Philip Orlando says the proposal, if adopted until the end of the 2021 season, will help teams cope with the players who will return physically and fit. EF FC coach Maka Maluisi supported the idea too and said it will help minimize cases of injuries which are witnessed mainly when players are unfit. Premier League clubs have invested in coronavirus testing machines that can turn around results in two and a half hours as they gear up towards finding a way to complete the season. Seeing the initiative, and it is understood that some clubs in the championship have also purchased the machines which cost £36,000 and are readily available. The machines can test only one person every two and a half hours, meaning that clubs could realistically test seven employees each day with them. That along with the cost is probably why there is little demand for them from the NHS, whose test results take longer to return. The Premier League is confident of privately securing the requisite number of test kits to enable top flight football to restart without impacting on public health needs. Amiens related from League One after the season was ended amid the COVID-19 crisis on Thursday will study reasons behind the decision before planning any legal challenge, the club's president has said. The 2020 campaign was suspended with 10 matches remaining as part of the French government's steps to contain the spread of coronavirus last month. With some teams having played 27 matches and others 28, the French league LFP drew up the final standings according to the performance index, number of points per game weighed by head-to-head -head record, resulting in Amiens and Toulouse going down. Paris Saint-Germain were awarded a 7th league title in 8 years, while 7th place Lyon, who missed out on European qualification, said they would possibly appeal against the LFP's decision. The Manchester City striker Sergio Aguero believes many Premier League players will be fearful of resuming the season in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, potentially putting their families at risk in the rush to get back on the pitch. The Argentinian forward has said the thought of returning to training and playing matches frightens him and the feeling will be mutual among lots of players. The coronavirus has killed more than 26,000 people in the UK and infected more than 165,000. Premier League clubs are due to meet on Friday to discuss plans to resume training and complete the season. But Aguero believes the nature of the virus will naturally leave players at risk until a vaccine is readily available. And that's what Adam Anzani's bulletin for tonight. My name is Karija Zimbo. Thank you for watching and good night.